George Clooney takes over as Batman, and Robin, played by Chris O'Donnell, joins him in combating Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze in Batman and Robin, one of five new summer movies we'll be reviewing this week on Siskel and Ebert. I'm Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times. And I'm Gene Siskel of the Chicago Tribune, and boy, was I shocked by the new Batman movie. It's so overproduced. Every scene is so action-filled that the movie does all of the thinking and emoting for us, and you just sit there looking at dazzling effects, yes, but you still feel bored. Add to that an unending parade of leering, double entendre jokes centered on the male anatomy, and you have an extravagant, often tasteless bore. I saw plenty of walkouts at the public screening I attended, and I would have been there with them. Here's the opening action scene as Batman and Robin first encounter Mr. Freeze in the Gotham Museum of Natural History. He's trying to steal a giant diamond. <laughs> You're not sending me to the cooler. So far, so good. Too bad we're only ten minutes into the movie as the scene continues. Stay cool, bird boy. Batman has another adversary in the film, a lissom creature known as Poison Ivy, played by a languorous Uma Thurman. One problem with her character? She spreads poison, but no one itches. They just swoon. Why are all the gorgeous ones homicidal maniacs? Is it me? Part of the byplay between Batman and Robin yeah, she involves jealousy. Well, she's infected us with some sort of pheromone extract. Oh, is that what it is, Bruce? I'm under some kind of magic spell? She wants to kill you, dick. Well, I've already delivered my criticism of Batman and Robin. The action sequences are overstuffed. They're burdened by wall-to-wall -wall music. The joking is all below the belt. George Clooney is a good-looking bore in his role. And boring is the last word I would have expected to use so often in describing such a high-powered and, again, well-produced but overproduced Batman movie. Uh, I didn't like it either, Gene, although I guess I liked it a little more than you did. I would uh, give it two stars. How many would you uh, give That's it? exactly what I'm giving, Roger. Okay, fine. Uh, it is true that the action sequences are so busy that you can't get involved in Not them. They're too hard to follow. It's like there's a pinball machine with all five balls on the machine well at put. the same time. And uh, as for Clooney as Batman, you know, I realize this time it doesn't matter who plays Batman. Right. I think they cast him according to the chin, which is all you can see when he has the costume on, because there's no real interest in the Batman and Robin characters. It's always the villains. Yeah. And these, are not, these villains are not really up there with Jack Nicholson, Danny DeVito, Tommy Lee Jones. But even apart from that... Uh, there were so many questions about Batman and Robin that would be interesting to answer if the movie had any serious interest in its characters. Also, but Tim Burton is another level of filmmaker than Joel Schumacher, and Tim Burton puts a psychological approach in his filmmaking that is at least more interesting. We've liked the other pictures. Um, here, you're, you're quite right. There is nothing, no, there's no human element. When the butler is the one thing that you respond to emotionally because he may die, that, I mean, yeah, that's a that's sad strange. commentary. And his niece comes from England, Alicia Silverstone, without a British accent, and is kind of a disappointment as back. Yeah, sure Actually, I did like Uma Thurman, though, as Poison Ivy. She has some good Wouldn't scenes. the scratching have been... If, if, Poison Ivy wanted to have somebody scratch.